and uh, you know, I was going through again stuff for the Obama deception too. And if you don't have the Obama deception yet, folks, if you don't have a hard copy, now is the time to get one. Okay, this this movie has been seen by tens of millions of people right now, waking up people at an alarming rate, getting them hip to what the Federal Reserve is, introducing them to the Bilderberg Group, letting them know what these climate bills are really about. The Obama Deception, such an important film. Go to Infowars.com and get it right now. But in my research for o Obama Deception 2, I'm watching again this Gibbs press conference, and uh, one of the reporters is asking him about his uh, anti-illegal immigration stance. And he says, well, you know, Obama said that he was going to enforce the rules that were on the books. Why isn't he doing that? And it, basically he gets blown off and it's politics as usual because he says one thing to get elected and does another. You know, he talked about the North American Union and putting a stop to the SPP agreements. And then Dobbs had to call him out in his first hundred days and say he's done nothing of the sort. He's moving forward with it, just like the president before him and the president before him, because this is a globalist agenda. It has nothing to do with Republican or Democrat. They are controlled by the same people. We literally do not have elections anymore. They are selections. All right, let's go to, let's see, we're on John in California. John, you're on the air. Oh, hi, uh, Jason. Uh, good to talk to you. Uh, today's show, well, you just uh, had, uh, this is about the Second Amendment and gun confiscation. Mm -hmm. uh, you just had the commercial about Front Sight. Mm -hmm. You just had the, uh, the gentleman on from uh, GunOwners.org. Yep. Uh, you just talked about the uh, mayor from Newark doing what mm -hmm. he's going to do. Uh, we know Sotomayor is coming up next week. And, and uh, let's just uh, heard, stop I've... with Sotomayor. She wrote an entire book called America's Deadly Obsession, where she tries to make the argument that the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment actually excludes us from having guns, and only the military is supposed to have guns. An entire book about it. And I was going to say that I have not heard anything about that book except on Infowars. Yeah, no one else. It's, it's a total blackout. No one else wants to me mention that she's a council member on La Raza. It was okay to bring up the Belizean Grove because most people don't know what it is. And really, the only person that took it seriously was Stephen Colbert, and he runs a comedy show. Let me repeat that. Stephen Colbert, the only person to actually report on that legitimately. He runs a comedy show. But they don't want to touch the fact that she is a council member on La Raza, a group about race. A literal racist organization, not just a member, a council member on that. And they don't want to bring up the fact that she wrote a book called America's Deadly Obsession where she wants your guns. She's a Supreme Court justice. That's what they're trying to prop her up as. She wants your guns. Go ahead. Right. And this is, this is, this is a, kind of the summary question that I'm, I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. that given all this, uh, what's, what's your kind of overall take on where you think this is headed with the Second Amendment? Like, I want to take this front sight course. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting here thinking, you know, by the time I get there and I take it and I get my handgun, I'm not going to have my handgun anymore. Listen, take the course. we got to fight this thing. We can't allow them to have one of their little Supreme Court decisions of five to four in favor of taking guns. And that's what it'll be. That's what they're gearing up. They're trying to put a total gun grabber on there. And once she's in, they'll probably make her the spectacle or the scapegoat of why Americans can no longer have guns. Well, Sotomayor came in, and she made such a compelling argument, and her book was so good, and you know her judgment is just. And they'll do it WWE style like they do with all of these bills or all, or all of these decisions uh, that, you know, affect us. For instance, when they took away our Miranda rights, and they did that, folks, uh, they, they basically ruled that you no longer need a lawyer. You no longer need a lawyer present to be interrogated by police, and it can be held up in a courtroom, and they can deny you that lawyer. And then they use some double speak and say, well, it's not really denial of a lawyer, but it was a five to four decision. So you'll start seeing it in the media, and they're not going to keep quiet about it. There's going to be probably some kind of an event where, you know, well, well, we'll look at the, uh, well, what was it, the, uh, I forget which school it was that that uh, gentleman shot up recently, like last year, and they'll look at this James Von Braun case, and they're just going to say, you know, we can't have guns, or we've got to ban the majority of guns, and she's going to be the, the poster woman for this. She's going to be the figurehead that they point to and say, Sotomayor is in here, and she's doing the right thing for this country. She's taking away the guns. We can't allow it to happen. We can't allow that 5-4 to four WWE decision that is in the midst. I mean, first they have to actually get her in, and I think they're going to have no problem with that. I think she's going to be confirmed. I don't see them throwing her out. I, I, I can't remember the last time that they actually propped up a Supreme Court justice and didn't allow them in. I think Roberts was the last one that they approved, right? 
Yes, Judge Roberts. Yeah, and the, you know, the only thing that I saw Roberts get asked about was that was legitimate was Joe Biden asking him if that he would be for the mandatory chipping of American citizens. And, of course, he said no. But you mark my words, in 10 to 15 years, if it comes down to it, he'll vote yes. So, you know, again, we just have to keep battling this stuff just because bad legislation and bad Supreme Court decisions seem to be on the horizon doesn't mean you shouldn't take that course. I should take that course. I mean, I can barely fire a weapon. I fired off some shotguns and and some uh you know some rifles in my day but i've never actually fired a pistol and that's something i should learn how to do but then again i'm in new york there's no way i'm going to get a conceal and carry permit and the same thing in new jersey you know we discussed that with larry pratt it is so difficult for you to get a conceal and carry permit in those two places it's almost impossible i mean you can be a former police officer you can be a former security guard you can be a former military person and it's still almost impossible so there's gun restrictions all over the country and they're going to try to expand on that and especially with this gun grabber america's deadly obsession if you don't believe me go type it in you can buy the book off of amazon i thank you for the call we're going to come back take even more callers hit up some of these other news stories that we haven't been able to further evidence that pakistan tortured suspects for britain no kidding it's not even a debate they're having this in the uk now that they're also torturing people just like we do in guantanamo bay and we do it at abu Ghraib. Well, British people do it, too. You see, they're our main ally on this. And they're saying, oh, no, they haven't tortured anybody. They don't condone torture. Of course they do. Of course they do. Human Rights Watch says Pakistani intelligence officials have confirmed torture took place with full knowledge of British agents. Of course it did. The Pakistani ISI, the Inner Services Intelligence Committee, their CIA, is in bed with British intelligence, is in bed with United States intelligence. It was founded by British intelligence and revamped in the 80s through the CIA when they were when they were running covert programs with Islamic militants and Osama bin Laden open history folks in fact the president of Pakistan gets on television and talks about bin Laden being a CIA asset at the time and Hannity calls him a nut job well at least Hannity played the clip you know because I didn't see it all over the mainstream media I saw it on one area and of course it was poo pooed Oh, no, bin Laden would never work with the United States. He openly worked with the United States. The bin Laden family gets tons of military industrial complex contracts. The Pakistani ISI is the CIA, is MI6. Come on, folks. Get a handle on it. That's the real deal. That's the real paradigm. They are interlocked. It's an international intelligence organization. We'll be back after this. It's the Alex Jones Show.